Hello everyone, my name is Chang Meng Liu. I'm a cloud software engineer from Intel. Today, my colleague Xiao Dong Liu and I will deliver this topic together. Uh, the title of this presentation is What are device emulation in SBDK based on VFI user protocol? Uh, here is today's agenda. Uh, we will give a brief introduction on VFI user components. Uh, second, we will introduce the implementation of the emulator what how, uh, device based on the third party lib VFI user library. And then we will compare the performance uh, numbers of VFI user versus the host user in one single VM. Uh, finally, we will list our future development plans and the patches links mentioned in this presentation. Okay, let's go through the first part. First, let me give a in brief introduction on what a VFI user is. A uh, VFI user is a protocol that allows a device to be emulated in a separate process outside of a VMM. The VFI user specification is largely based on Linux VFI Oracle interface to implement them as messages to be sent over Unix domain socket. Here, VMM includes uh, Club, Hypervisor, and Kimu. And SPDG also uh, includes full support of VFI user client. The second part is uh, VFI user server, which is used to emulate a PCI device in a separate process. Then let's see VFI user client support in SBDK. Uh, the diagrams in the right give a brief view of it. We have a VFI user PCI device abstraction library, which provides PCI device access APIs in the low level. Uh, this library accepts uh, a unique domain socket path address as input parameter and associated with a PCI device. Then, uh, Watchow and MME client library provide support independent abstractions. Then we can add a new VFI user transport layer which uses to forward the PCI bar accesses from Watchow uh, library to remote target via VFI user client PCI device access APIs. Uh, based on the client of uh, our library, SBDK provides a common block device uh, layer on it. The user can test a block device over specified Unix domain socket address. Uh, currently, the device type can be virtual block, uh, virtual SCSI, or VME devices. Uh, at last, the users can use VFI user client to build their own applications. Then let's see the device emulation support in the server side. Device emulation in server side is based on third party library. Uh, we, we call it VFI, uh, Libre VFI user. In last year's KVM from uh, we already presented the emulation of MM device based on LibreVFI user library. In this presentation, we will demo the emulation of virtual devices. The emulated virtual device library will respond to uh, PCI bar accesses messages from the client side. The client should uh, could be a VMM or SBDK client, and it will, it will process uh, variants. Then on top of the emulator virtual device library, we provide the virtual block and SCSI device emulation. Zero response device configuration accesses based on virtual block and SCSI specification. And paste the block or SCSI request from the variance. And finally, this block or SCSI request will be processed uh, via the block uh, device uh, layer APIs in SBDK as offload engine. Okay, since both a Wi-Fi user and a VHost user can provide 
on water block and scarcity device simulation and accesses. So what's the common and the difference between the two solutions? Uh, let's see from the client side. Uh, SBDK Waterhole Library has a very good abstraction layer. So the client side uh, library can support uh, both VFR user and the host user as a communication channel with remote emulation processes. And you can run it inside the VMM, which acts as a pooling mode driver via the PCI transport. Uh, let's see from a server side uh, view. I list the table um, below. Uh, the thread model is the same for the host user and the Wi-Fi user. Uh, for what health feature support, um, currently, uh, VHOS SCSI cannot support the package RIN. Uh, this is one uh, difference. And both package RIN and split RIN are supported for VTOL block uh, in VFI user solution and in the VHOS solution. Uh, for the live, live migration part, uh, multi sessions and the interrupt mode features are only supported in the host user solution now. Uh, these features are in development plan now for VFA user. Okay, well, here, since the host user and the VFA user had too much in common, right? And the host user can cover all the usage scenarios. People may ask why VFI user is still developed, right? One reason is to simplify the development and the maintenance effort in client and the server side for device simulation. For the client side, uh, users can use one VFI user driver, client driver to connect to remote device simulation process. The device types could be hotel devices or NVMe devices or even NIC devices. These are VFI user client driver support in Collab Hypervisor and SPDK2. And the, the upstreaming of the VFI user client driver in Kimu is a work in progress now. And another reason is a unified live migration framework could be possible. For example, developers don't need to design another software uh, framework to enable environment device. Uh, at last, for the vhost user uh, solution, it is designed only for hotel devices. It cannot cover environment device, but the VFI user model can cover uh, hotel devices and the environment devices, right? At last, Compared with VHOST user, the PCI device simulation is also in remote process, which makes the VFI user client in VMA is much thinner than VHOST user. Uh, I will talk this a, a bit more in the detail plan, uh, in the implementation slides later. Okay, let's see the detailed implementation of the emulated water block device and the SCSI device in SBDK. As we already know, VFI users need to emulate PCI devices in the remote process. So VFI user server process uh, needs need to define what our device live out as the first step. Uh, first, we will define MSX capability to use region 1 as the MSX table and use region 2 as MSX pending bit array. Uh, for those two areas, we will both reserve one uh, page. Then, according to the virtual specification, we need to define Windows specific capabilities for each virtual device configuration sections. Uh, here, the first three sections are defined as MMO access areas. For client drivers, uh, which 
access the regions, they will be forwarded via the unit domain socket as the messages. And for the uh, uh, first part, not notification area, we will support dual mode in practice. It's up to users' configuration to define this area, uh, use a memory map for region or not. If we define this area as the memory mappable area, then a pulley mode in the target is used. Uh, then we need to set the callback functions for each VFO or region. For the most important uh, VFO region 4, this is mapped P to PCL bar 4 in practice. The callback functions is, is called with offset, length, and uh, rewrite flag. Uh, we will use the offset parameter to determine which virtual device configuration section. For example, if the offset is less than 4 kilobytes, it is used to access the virtual common configuration section. Uh, based on the offset and the value, we will do features negotiation uh, in the server side. First, then map the virtual queues in the server side and start the device finally. Uh, currently, virtual block and SCSI devices are added in SBDK, but we provide the common uh, abstraction layer to allow users and other types of de virtual devices. Another important uh, virtual device configuration section is device specific configuration area. Uh, this section is uh, device type specific. Uh, for example, if for the virtual block device, uh, capacity and the block size attributes are stored in this section. And for virtual SCSI device, uh, number of queues attribute is uh, stored in this section. Okay, here is the thread model in SBDK for virtual SCSI. Uh, virtual block use the same one. Uh, users need to specify CPU core mask when starting a virtual SCSI device. Then an uh, accept polar is started to listen uh, coming socket uh, uh, connections. When Kimio connects to the Unix domain socket, the accept polar will start a socket message polar on the same thread. After the connection is created, we can register, uh, we can unregister the accept polar as an optimization. Uh, currently, this is not uh, implemented now. And uh, the socket message polar will receive all socket messages from the KMU, uh, then deliver them uh, via the via uh, region access callback functions uh, based on the offset and the region. Uh, when we start the device in the server side, we will start a RIN puller finally to pull all the uh, VRINs. Actually, there is a BDEL puller too in the same thread to process block our request. Okay, after we start the VRIN puller to process our command sent from the VM or uh, VFI user clients, then we need to do the actually command processing for them. For virtual block device, the command set defined in virtual block specification is very limited. All of them are supported. As BDK block layer already has different block APIs to support them. And for the virtual SCSI device, as we know, SCSI is a very large industry specification. Fortunately, SPDK already has a SCSI uh, library, which provides a monetary SPC and SPC command support. And uh, we use this library in the SCSI uh, target. Uh, so here, we can still reuse this library to process SCSI command in the VRANs. Uh, finally, there is a common work uh, that can translate a discrete 
into the R vectors and translate guest physical memory to host the virtual memory. This is uh, those features are common both for uh, we host user and a VFI user. We can do them together in future. Now, let's start the performance section. From the implementation and the thread model, VFL user and the VHOT user for virtual devices are much in common. But here, we still get some performance data as a comparison for audience as reference. In this test, we start one VM with two virtual block controllers. One block controller is provided by VFL user. The other one is provided by VHOS user. Instead of the target, we use one Intel P5800 option drive as the storage backend. It was split into two logical parts one for the VHO user controller, the other one for the VFA user controller. We also use the four word queues in both client and the server side. The size of each queue is 128. Also, the packet run feature is enabled. We run FL inside the VM. Here is the FL parameters in VM. The difference between different running case is the LQ depth. It is started from 1 to 16. This is our test case 1. It shows the test result for both configurations in VM and in SPDK from LQ depths 1 to 16. Performance number is almost the same for the two solutions. From previous slides, we know that two additional polars are used in VFL user solution. But from the performance number of test case 1, we don't see the impact of the two polars. And we test another test case in test case 2. We replace the physical SSD with two now loopback block devices. The purpose is to test KVM efficiency and virtualization over height. All other parameters are same with parameter of test case one, except LQ depth and the read write mode. Read and write is used instead of read and read. We can see even use here Q depth. The two solutions are still almost the same, and the two additional polars almost have no impact to the result. The maximum LPS one host core can provide is limited by CPU capability. Here is another different test case. Its performance data are collected using SPDK Vertel client. In server side, using the same configuration as test case 2, that two now type B devs are created. One is exported by VFL user, one is ex exported by VHOST user. SPDK virtual client library is the same for VHOST user and VFL user transpose. Same parameters are applied to BDAO perf on each type of the virtual devices. When running in this scenario, both client and the server are running in polling mode. From the table, the performance number is still almost the same. Okay, let's give a summary of this presentation. Uh, first, about the plans. As they are, we already mentioned in previous slides, SBK Vital Client Library can be used both for VHOST user and VFI user. But in the server side, currently we have two independent implementations for VHOST user, KIMU emulate PC device part and SBDK mainly do the WinRing processing part, include the DQ, in processing and the 
translate the descriptors to our vectors uh, and uh, also for the varying part uh, for the varying processing part they are most same for vhost user and vfi user they will abstract this part into a common library in the future another feature is interrupt mode support in the thread modern page we said uh, VFI user had two additional pullers which can be optimized. Although we don't see performance drop with these two pullers, but still we can optimize the two pullers into interrupt mode after starting device or enable the interrupt mode uh, with all pullers. This is useful when running uh, multiple VMs in one single CPU core. Here are all the patches used in this presentation. Some of the patches are still under good review in SBDK. And the VFI user client driver is also under review in Kimu. There are some code already in the main branch uh, for the VFI user client side. Uh, Club hypervisor and SBDK already had full support of it. Uh, that's all for today's presentation. Thank you.